Okay, Preble, you have something? I do. Um, first of all, I mostly work in quarter inch um, scale, so it's a lot easier to store, but the same principle could be applied, just different size boxes. Um, so I have a big project right now um, that I'm gonna be working on, or uh, I've worked on off and on, and this is uh, this house, um, and it's in its case. So when it, when a bigger project, when you know it becomes bigger, I like to put it in a case, and that's how I contain it until later, you know, when I'm actually doing stuff to it. But the stuff that goes inside it, I'm like, well, I have both kits and, you know, pieces of it um, that are already finished. And as I worked on it, I've had two boxes going, one on the very, very top that you can't see, but they're basically these photo boxes. You see, I've got it labeled um, Petite Chateau. Um, and then, and this one actually says furniture where the other one says, um, the building itself and when I first bought the kit everything that I bought fit in that one box literally you know so it, it does expand after a while so this one you can see um, because this is a house I had ba a bag for each floor because I bought all the stuff to go in it um, which is not my normal thing but you know this one I did Anyways, um, and, I, and when I say normal, I mean buying everything. Usually I'm kind of mix and match and whatever I want to use. <clears throat> so to keep it organized so that I wasn't constantly searching through things and, you know, even little things that I thought I might use that like I bought, you know, individual items, um, I would put in a bag. And, um, and like I said, they were labeled like this one says basement. Um, and bags are easily reusable. So that's, that's one box. Um, but then, and this one's kind of expanded. Um, I have the basement. And because it's already finished, the basement is actually in this box um, because it's going to fit. And then I have some other stuff that I've worked on that's in there. And you can see I've kind of got these little trays to help me, you know, kind of organize the box itself and keep things from moving around. And then I have another one. <laughs> this is the furniture that I've actually built. And I'm not, it's not organized by floor or anything. It's just kind of put together. And, and, you know, so these boxes are great for, they're so pretty. You want to buy them. And, and that's what I end up doing with them is um, finding something to hold, um, you know, and then um, a different project, um, the Betterly boxes from last year, um, uh, once I start working on it, I end up in this smaller, um, you know, it's like a half size. Uh, you can see it's the same, uh, roughly the same width. Um, and so really, if you needed to, you could put two of these in the box. Um, but uh, you, know, you don't have to. But anyways, just, you know, different. Uh, and again, I'm using little um, box lids as trays um, to kind of contain it in uh, and then, um, I guess that's it. As far as projects, that's how I organize my projects is in those boxes and I have a ton of them. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Preble. Uh, Julia. Okay, so um, how I started doing for my works in project, it was mainly for the Betterly houses, since there's so many kits. It's a bit of a mess, but this is, some of the trays got used for other stuff. But I have a bakery rack. I have the tray that has all of the kits and everything being used for that uh, house is on that tray. Um, and I have them that way I can just take the tray, bring it over to a uh, table by my desk and everything can just stay on that tray so that it doesn't go wandering or get eaten. Um, and then I can put it back on the, the rack in order to get it out of the way again. And like the stuff if there's a project with a lot of kits i actually have been using my dream box 
trying to get. <laughs> So I've been using my dream box. Okay, ignore the image. Um, but it has all of the various kits for the big project of letters to Santa. So that's, I'm still trying to figure out some of the, the arrangement on it, but that's what I've been doing so far. Hey. Okay. And that's all I have. <laughs> okay, Barbara Thornton Hill. Oh, I'm not going to show you anything because I've already showed you my boxes a hundred times. I get these boxes from a container store, so they all are the same. Anyway, I have several sizes depending what project I'm doing. So I put everything into a box uh, when I get it, when I get the kit and I get all my as I get accessories, I put them in that box that go with the same project. And if if I'm working on a one inch thing where the building is too big to put in this box, then I just keep all the parts in the box and and keep the box by the building and store it in my garage, of course, because it's got it when I can I got to get it out of my workshop sometimes or on a shelf in my workshop. And so uh that's all I was going to say. Because you can't always get a one inch box or even a larger bo uh, house into a, these boxes. Like I can't imagine even Preble's boxes. She can get a house in there. <laughs> Maybe some of the small quarter scale one little projects, but not a big house. It, it was very tight. Into, until yeah. <laughs> that's why I moved to two boxes immediately when I started working on it. So, so if I have a big one inch scale, which I don't do very often anymore, but a one inch room box, or I don't do a one inch house, uh, then, but even a quarter inch house is pretty big once you've got it partially constructed. Cause I'm talking about projects that are partially constructed. How do you, that's what we're talking about is ongoing projects. And so uh, then I just keep them together though. I try to keep them always together. Otherwise, it's really sad. <laughs> okay, anyone else for work, work in progress? Okay, we'll move on to lighting. And again, if you have a special light that you like, put your name in the chat box. And lighting is very important, and especially for a quarter scale. So anyone? No, well, I guess pretty much everybody probably does kind of the same thing. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I saw a new at light at my um, cabin a couple of weeks ago, and it was like the traditional one that opens up, <clears throat> but um, so, uh, a magnifying glass slides out from it. Oh, nice. And I was going to check and see how much they were. Um, one of my friends had that and she was showing it to us. And I thought that was really good because you have, I have one of those regular black ones. Um, but then with the magnifying with the quarter inch, it would be very helpful. I have one of those and it's wonderful. That you know, it just folds down, but when you pull it up, you yeah. can pull the top up and then the magnifying comes out. But yeah. it also has the hot light, which is wonderful for doing miniatures. But well, I don't I have, think that they make a, that anymore. Well, no, I, I have an older one that's a round one that that has a magnifying glass with it. But this is the regular one, like the black one that closes up and then opens up and she's just got it so it's got to be a newer one you could check that out tight enough to where it stays where you put it mine keeps falling it's right behind me and uh the thing doesn't stay up it just keeps lowering on my you know to where it's on my head if i had it over here did yours tighten up good marty Yes, you, there's a little 
thing that you have to tighten up so it'll stay up. I have to look at it. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. I have one like that, but hers was wasn't black, but but there was a piece on the side of, of the part that lights up that comes out and it's a magnifying glass. And it's on the side? Yeah, uh, it's on the side. Has something here. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, this is just a, a traditional art light, but what I was going to say about it is it does not, when, like the bulb itself, it, it's a daylight bulb or a bright mm -hmm. white bulb. It doesn't have to be the art brand. It's kind of washing me out but <laughs> um I was uh, I do actually have a second art light um and it actually allows you to adjust the um the I said volume the the um uh right of light that it, it has um it is an art light um and it, it has also a charging you know one of those platforms where you can wireless charge uh, although I don't like that part but, um, and I don't have it over here because I use it at my work, my actual work computer. Um, but I, I wanted to mention that, you know, there are a lot of variety of bot lights. And then the other thing I wanted to say is that um, overhead is my chandelier. I'm in the, the dining room, um, but, you know, it could be any room. The lights that I have in the chandelier are bright white. They're 60 watt LEDs. Um, you know, the traditional style shape, you know, because that's what you can get nowadays. Um, in my studio that I, I'm not able to use right now, uh, we have um, also um, bright white, um, you know, there's they're, um, the kind of the track lighting where you can set it to wherever you want it to. But the point I want to um, clarify is just when you pick a light that's going to be a task light, it should be bright white or daylight because that's going to give you the truest colors when you're looking at something. And it's also going to be the, you know, the brightest for, you know, your vision um, to be able to see um, details better. That's all. Julia. Yeah. Um, I, I found the, the one that I was talking about on Amazon and I will put in the chat. Okay. Julia? Okay, so you can see it here. This is my Cricut 360 light. It's actually a floor lamp. They also have a version that is a table lamp. Oh, wow. But I don't have a lot of room on my table. Um, but the one thing I like about it is you can control how bright and how not bright it is. You can also control the type of light. Uh, where it dulls it a little bit. I forget the technical terms that they used, but it has the two different light settings. So you can just have it where it's normal or you can change between the two um, different types of light settings. Um, and that one's really, really useful, especially with painting and trying to figure out the various things and how light does difference differences when you're painting and doing stuff so uh, you can change the light setting but it it do, does a full um large amount of light plus it can be adjusted up or down um and it it swivels pretty easy so um and the the uh, electrical switch of it can actually apparently get taken out of it uh and you can move it around as you need. So that's all I have. Okay, anyone else? Okay, Rusty, uh, you have a few things on your uh, items that you use. Oh, um, items that I use, I have got very similar to the one that Julia's just shown. And I've actually got two because the Kent Association from the Blind gave me one as a gift as well, which I thought was very kind of them, so I can see what yeah. I can do. And I've been given also by the National Health, which is very kind because we pay for it, but never mind, um, which is a light 
which is a magnifying light. I won't, I don't know whether you can see it, but that unfortunately you've got to hold in your hand. So I've kitted myself up with, you know, those big magnifiers that rest on your chest and you've got a cord around your neck. I've oh, managed, yes. to, managed to fit that up with a makeshift stand and use a light behind it. So there are wills, where there's a will, there is a way. I've um, <laughs> got this and I use a paper clip, which is very simple, very cheap. That's me all over. And uh, I attach it, if I can do it one handed up here. I can't see what I'm doing anyway, which is a great help. Um, right, like that. And it will rest on it and it will stand there for me. See, it rests on the... Mm -hmm. So there are ways around getting vision, but uh, yeah. I've also got a 10 times... I will probably break my neck trying to show it to you, but I've got a 10 times magnifier which is an electronic one. So we're going into the big deal now. Um, unfortunately, got a fixed range. It's meant for people working on electronics at a work desk, not 3D little houses. So it's a bit uh, iffy, that one. But between them all, I've got some sort of vision. So there you are. And if you haven't got anybody else, I will tell you something that I saw on the news yesterday. The do the son of the girl who invented Bramley Hedge lives just across the Thames from us in the next county. Uh, yeah. And he was walked with his mother while she sketched the trees. And the Bramley Hedge tree is a hornbeam it still exists and it's the same shape and that's what she copied and that's how Bramley Hedge came into being from his <laughs> wall stepping forest and to get the coincidence I belong to the local archaeological society we do digs and we dig, dug at a place called Hartley now Hartley means deer field Hart's the old word for deer and the words field is a lee. It's a clearing in the woods, it was heavily wooded area and the manor house that was on that site, he was rather naughty. He was the Chancellor of the Exchequer at the time, in the time before, well just after William the Conqueror oh, came and he used to cross the river and he used to go to Epping Forest to loot the to, well, take deer from it, he's not supposed to because it belongs to the king. It's royal hunting ground. But, of course, you don't really do much with your Chancellor of the Exchequer because he knows where the money is. So you're very careful. And he got off every time. Normal people would have been hanged. So I've dug his land. Friends live in Epping Forest. And I didn't know I was walking past the tree I would later make a house from. So there you go. So useless, cool. inform useless information department. The yeah. wheel goes full circle. That's right, so end of story. <laughs> the fact you can see that tree is amazing. I yeah. didn't even know it was a real tree. It's a hornbeam. If you look it up, it's a hornbeam. I've never That's even heard. Thing. I'm going to have to right. look at hornbeam. I've never heard of it. And it still exists, and I've probably walked past it in my time. So there you go. That's Just awesome. across the Thames, up north of us. So there you go. As I say, funny coincidences. It was on yesterday's news, just one of those little items to fill in the space. Uh -huh. so, there you go. Right, end. <laughs> Okay, anyone got anything on either any of these topics? Well, I guess I will stop the recording. Well, that was a short meeting. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were still recording. I wouldn't have.